the screws loose, let him strip the bolts on him. Should have never sent him to pick up the work for him. Spray the park and had my shit inside the car. Marcus Smart Boy was shooting with a 36 on him. Said if he wasn't in a rush, they was all gone. All right. He was gonna show and show him. Readings, shuttlings. Welcome to another episode of Chuddy's Corner. Sponsored by Nick Prano Real Estate. Check out nickprano.com, all your real estate needs. Uh, it is Thursday, March 28th. The Celtics lose to the Hawks, 123-122 in overtime. Uh, they had everyone back in the lineup. The Hawks had a few more people out of the lineup. Uh, this game was a back-and-forth game the whole way. I think there was, what was the final? I think like over 30, almost 40 lead, 45 lead changes. Um it was just pretty much the biggest lead. Celtics had a lead at eight. Hawks had a lead at four. We're going to break down the whole game for you. Um, before we do that, I'm your host, Dugouts. With me as always, Chuddy. King Chuddy, how you doing tonight? Doing all right. Uh, not the result <laughs> we wanted, but hell of a game for the most part. Got some good college basketball action going on. Sweet 16. And uh, I know it's only March 28th, but we got t- 10 o'clock opening day baseball game <laughs> going on. Weird stuff. Uh, the Chuddy Dome is busy as usual, but we got to talk about that Celtics game. Yeah, I mean, I was glad, I was a little bit glad that there was some March Madness coming on because I, at the end of that game, because I think if you if there wasn't any late night sports on, I feel like you would probably go, end up going into a real dark place. So <laughs> I was glad to see how stacked the slate is, and yeah, some uh, some late plenty of action, late opening day baseball. Didn't the baseball season like open up like last weekend, like six a.m. Well, in South yeah, Korea exactly. or something like that? That is it just the most classic MLB shit ever. Um, <laughs> But Great yeah, we do, we do have to talk about the, the Celtics game. Uh, this one was not a pretty one. Um, I mean, it was fun. It was exciting. I don't know what uh, what we've done to piss the Hawks off, but they seem like this <laughs> game was really personal. I was trying to like look back to see if Eddie House, I didn't know if we had like another magic situation where Eddie House, <laughs> he was like calling the game too. I was like, uh-oh, what did, what did Eddie do here? Um, but yeah, the Celtics lose 123-122. Game was in an overtime. Uh, DeJounte Murray, where I was, I was talking about him, he had 44 points on 44 shots, but still um, just like the total engine for that team. Uh, Tatum finished with 31, Brown at 18, Porzingis at 20, Derek White at 22. Uh, there's a lot to break down in this one. <laughs> I think we'll get into all that later, but why don't you go ahead and give us just like the recap of how the game played out, uh, and then we'll jump into some of the storylines coming out of this one. Yeah, so Celtics obviously uh, blow the 30-point lead to Atlanta on Monday night, have two nights off in Atlanta to kind of just hang out, uh, gear up for this game, come out, finally get Drew back in the lineup. So the original starting five, I um, think we come out, would you think we come out with a little bit of an edge and I guess kind of did. We were, I like the way we were playing defense early on. I like the way we were almost doing everything except for making threes. Um, started right where we left off with shooting. One of 11 in the first quarter on threes. We had a one-point lead, and I, I think we are 11 of 15 from twos, and we're getting great looks inside and out, um, and, but the three is just not falling at all, um, playing enough to make up for it. And then, I mean, like you said, the fact our biggest lead was eight, theirs was four. Truly about as back and forth of a NBA yeah. game as you'll see start to finish. I thought the Hawks played really well. I thought we were not methodical or lethargic, but just like a step off our true, like, crispest we can play um on offense i thought you know good looks not great looks not great shooting finally got it going a little bit um before the end of the second half we, i think we made like four threes in a row maybe to end the half whereas we had had nothing fall and i think at one point we we were two of 30 going back to the halftime of last game um yeah on a run of threes which again for this team is just crazy so kind of if you think of that the fact that how poorly we had been shooting threes and we were still in it, I think is a testament to that. We were playing pretty good defense. We're making them work, but they were just hitting some tough shots. Um, you mentioned Murray. I mean, he would just keep, he was relentless. <laughs> um, obviously with those 44, he, attempts, was like just chirping he made a lot of tough ones. Yeah, he was very fired up. Bogey uh, was fired up. Quite he made mean. a few shots. Deandre Hunter, man, he was absolutely killing us. He's at, <laughs> it's gotta be one of the better games he's had this year. He was making a ton of tough shots too. Um, and then it was like their offensive boards and second chance points against our fast break points. So every time we were able to get stops, actually get a defensive rebound, we were able to push the ball. We were having a ton of success in transition, getting out and running. Um, but it was hard for us to do. For the second straight game, we saw a real struggle down low. No Al Horford tonight, but I mean, that's no excuse for the absurd amount of second chance points they got. So many offensive rebounds. Um, 
so many backbreakers and that really 17 offensive rebounds. Yeah, and that was kind of, kind of the story. Points. I mean, that that let them hang around in this game. Again, it was our slow shooting at least to start and uh their second chance points made this game close. I think that really stopped us every time it seemed like we were going to go on a run. We couldn't because we even if we get a stop, they get an offensive rebound, get another chance, kick them out, kick them out for backbreaking threes over and over again like we'd be up 6, get a stop, oh board, they get a three, they're back right back to down three. Um that just felt like the story. And then this game just turned into an absolute grind after halftime. I thought both teams ratcheted up the defense. It had almost a playoff like intensity. There were kind of high flying, like blocks on fast breaks back and forth. Jalen had a crazy chase down block on a Hunter dunk. And then uh, Murray had a crazy chase down on a Jalen layup. There were athletic kind of blocks. It was back and forth. It was a lot of defense. And um, again, I liked the way we were playing. I thought we were playing good defense, getting fairly good looks, just not making a ton of shots. Whereas the Hawks, I liked the way we were playing defense, but they were just making some crazy degree of difficulty shots um, that continued. I thought into the fourth quarter and then the game really, really slowed down, really turned into a grinded out back and forth game. Um, I thought for the most part, I liked the looks we were getting down the stretch in the fourth quarter when it was a tight game. We just weren't making them. Um, I thought we did a better job until kind of the final few possessions of involving everyone on offense. Uh, Porzingis mentioned 20 points. I feel like I think he had 15 shots in the first half. Um, And then just, again, kind of went away in the second half. Very quiet. It seemed like it was not until very late that we really made any attempt to get him back involved again. Um, But, yeah, it was a lot of. Like I said, not not awful looks and involving the right guys, but it was just a very slow both ways um, and, you know, a struggle to make shots for the most part. But we did a good job. It, it stayed back and forth. Um, and then the Hawks just kept hitting tough shot after tough shot. We couldn't couldn't put them away. And again, every cha- every big moment where it seemed like we were going to it seemed like they'd get an offensive rebound um, and make a three. It was just uh, the offensive rebound kick out to bogey who hit the shot to tie the game when it seemed like we had pulled away for good after um, Jalen hit that crazy pull-up mid-range shot. Looked like it should have been an and one. Um, and then again, got the stop, played great defense on Murray. I think it was Holiday that possession who hounded him, but they obviously got the second chance, hit the three. Then the Celtics had 26 seconds. Um, drove up. I don't know. Joe took the timeout right away. I wasn't sure. He usually doesn't. He didn't let them play. Drew something up, but um, basically just grinded the clock down, which – that's a tough situation because 26 seconds left. Like I'm, t- I'm almost torn on what to do. Cause you do want to probably try to get close to the last shot there, especially in a tie game, but just sitting on the ball and really kind of got bailed out by the Hawks foul. I don't know if they were trying to do that or not, but they kind of bailed um, Tate him out as he got into his drive pretty late. Then we tried to run our classic kind of uh, run the back screen and get Tatum the ball running from the half court, but the Hawks were all over it, sniffed it out. No wonder we for- do it. It's what we do every single time. Yeah, it didn't work so great. Um, sniffed it out. Tatum had to settle for a very tough three at the buzzer, off balance, almost banked it in, but it wasn't really a good look at all. Um, go to that overtime. Not, we're saying that's not a good look, not a decent look, nothing. Because last last one of these, you said it was decent. Like, I didn't okay, think it was a that, good look. You said that was decent. a way different shot. Way different okay. shot. But with, I'm just asking, so not a good look at the end of didn't the Didn't like this one at all, but again. Okay. This at least when it's tied, I can kind of live with it. Where it's like, as long as you're taking a shot at the buzzer, ensuring that it goes to overtime. I mean, they stopped our play. Obviously, I want to get a better look than that. But yeah. um, tie game, like you know, you can live with it more. If we were down one or something, and that was a look, it would just be like that sequence would have been an absolute disaster. Seeing as the game is tied, and you want to make sure that like you at least you win or go to overtime. Like you obviously don't want to give them the last shot. Yeah, it's a little more understandable, but still, um, would have wanted to see something much better there. Then went to overtime. Um, again, liked a lot of the stuff we ran in overtime. And truly just DeJounte Murray took over. Um, not a hyper-efficient night overall for him shooting. Because, yeah, I think it was 18 of 44. <laughs> but I got to hand it to him. In overtime, it seemed like he was he was making, making everything in overtime, a ton of shots yeah. in the mid-range. Um, super clutch. Getting the switch onto Porzingis. I thought Porzingis did a decent job of contesting and making him work. But he was just making tough long two after tough long two. Um, the Celtics finally had to start sending help. They had Jalen go blitz after the switch, doubled him. That was the one that Murray actually missed. And then he well, thought he got fouled by Porzingis, but he really kicked his legs out. And then he like tripped Porzingis. It was actually a pretty dirty play. At first I thought it was a soft technical, but that one was well-deserved. Um, but that was one of the only shots he missed. Then another, we got another chance where it seemed like we had him. They got the offensive rebound, kicked it back out. Of course, Murray hits a three to keep them in it. Um, Get another chance for a late game situation. We're down one. Get a chance to redeem ourselves. And I thought we did. I liked the play much better. We ran, posted up Porzingis, threw it into him. He hit JB with a backdoor, pulled up, 
tough contested mid-range shot, but uh, really good job of Jalen to hit that one with six seconds left. And then uh, you just need one stop to win the game. And obviously, DeJounte Murray just absolute, uh, you know, what can you even say? Another super tough shot. I thought Drew did a pretty good job defensively on him. Can't really argue with that. Uh, it was just DeJounte Murray's night. It was the Hawks' night. And they get the win on the basically buzzer beater. Uh, but point one second left on the clock. And Atlanta sweeps the little mini series for them. So tough loss for the Celtics. Tip of the cat to the Hawks. Yeah, you should, just as an aside, you should be allowed to, like, what Derek White did, that should count as something. <laughs> that should yeah. at least, like, buy you new more seconds or something. Like you should Pretty be, like, impressive. That was impressive stuff. So what you're referring that. to, if anyone didn't see it, um, yeah. we had point one seconds left. It looked like almost one of those, like, uh, rugby plays, or is it Australian Rules footy, where they toss it in and, like, it's a scrum in the middle and they throw yeah. one of their guys up right under the yeah, hoop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because obviously the only thing you can do with point one is tip it in. So there's no offensive goaltending. So the, basically what you want to do is try to shoot it in and anyone can go up and just touch it, and that counts. Um, and White threw it so perfectly that it just went in and no one had a chance to get up and touch it. So he yeah. made the shot but was out of bounds. Obviously that doesn't count. Uh, yeah, that should. Um, I know it doesn't. Yeah, it should. I mean. <laughs> it should count for something, even if it's not like a three-pointer. It should be like a something. Yeah. Like you get like a point. A point and you get to do another inbound. Like you get to do it again or something. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. You know, that would like be interesting. Four with point one and you just try to yeah. rip a few of those off. That could be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, uh, <laughs> that would. Yeah. Yeah. I think I wouldn't hate that, honestly, but... I think we get enough uh, Twitter juice going on that. We could be on to something. Yeah, I don't know. I would. It would have been cool if. Uh, would have been interesting if like Luke could have gotten up there and just gotten a pinky on it or something. Would have been a pretty yeah. cool way to walk off with a win there. But alas. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible Plus, podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to mute the mic before. <laughs> I tried to mute the mic. Anyone driving in their car? I'm sorry about that. Tried to hit the hit the mute button. I didn't get it. Um. Yeah, I think uh, I don't. I don't really know what I want to dive into first on this one. I think um, you know we kind of mentioned a little bit in that final possession of uh, uh, the fourth quarter. Uh, I just didn't really like anything that I saw on that at all. Um, I think the the ISO stuff is just just doesn't work. It just we have mm-hmm. we have enough. To, like I don't get what the point of having all. I feel like we got we had less ISO plays when we had like worse players like in the fourth quarter that we moved the ball around. So it's kind of weird. We have all these players that we have now. And it mm. still almost always just ends up being like a, a Tatum ISO. I mean, when he was before they fouled Tatum, it was literally everybody was standing there, like nobody was yeah. moving at all. Like it was, right. it was like the as as ISO as it can get. Uh, solitary yeah. confinement. So shit. the like, the only thing with that, like I said, is we'll like you start running your actions and then you get a good look, but you obviously want the last shot. So then, like you run a good play and get a good look with 14 seconds left. You take it. Like I don't know. When it's know. tied, when Maybe. it's tied, at least I get. Yeah, well, I get right, the, I but get it's almost it's tied, like you but... have to wait to start the action in that circumstance. But it's I the feel only like reason. even when okay, but even the last shot, I feel like there wasn't really much of an action there. It didn't like it just. Well, there was, was six more seconds. Nice there was six seconds left, and they ran, Drew ran a screen for Tatum. Yeah, I thought they should have passed. I thought they should have passed to to Drew there. Yeah, actually. I looked at Wesley Matthews. Kind of slipped. I mean, he it would have been a contested three for either guy, and there wasn't a lot of time left. But yeah, but I mean, it was. I don't know. You can't run like a ton of stuff with that much time. It just they just didn't. The Hawks so, were just all over it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like. I just I just didn't like it. And again, it just ties into a yeah. lot of this fourth quarter execution. I know that. Yeah, they didn't. There's use a lot. Like this is well. one of those things where it's become like every each side has their stats for it. So like I don't even really know. Like what I I want to believe that we have all this these like clutch moments, but it's like I don't know. I feel like it's been a while since we mm-hmm. had. So whatever, like you know. Well, I mean, we would have had one in overtime. Jalen did hit the shot with six seconds left to take yeah. the lead. I know, but I'm saying like uh, like a like a game winner. It feels like we haven't had yeah. a, a, obviously the the Drew, the Derek White notwithstanding, but that was sort of that wasn't like what we drew up or anything like that. That was right, just like right. an unreal kind of lucky thing. So did like that fourth quarter, obviously. Um, it worked out. I thought that Jalen took a tough shot, but he he made it. That's kind of that's sort of his spot too. So even if it didn't mm. go in, I'm kind of a little bit more comfortable with that one. Um, and yeah. then the final possession, I don't really know. I would have liked to have maybe seen a double get thrown at Murray a little bit sooner, just because like I know it's Drew Holiday out it's, there, and I know yeah. but he had just been killing us. Like that's it. It's like I right. get that the the rest of the team been playing well. Like Hunter had been shooting well too, but I don't know. I think I would have liked to have seen. Even at least someone like shading over that way, I feel like it was just like that guy was locked in. And when they showed yeah. that baseline view of it, 
like it looked he had he got that space like a lot more than I think the initial overhead like camera angle show when they showed that baseline he kind of had Drew way to his left when he started to go to the right. It was so, a nice move. I'm a little um, torn on that one because I think so much of the Celtics identity is their defense and the fact that they don't have to switch or put two guys on the ball. I know it's like the circumstance mm-hmm. of the moment, but I mean I think that's you what get I'm Drew on him. I think you're probably you got Drew on him. You probably expect that they're going to come send a screen because that's what they've been doing all fourth quarter, trying to get Porzingis on him. Um, and I think they had Capella, they had Tatum on Capella to try to switch that. So I, I bet the Celtics were anticipating a screen and they were going to have uh, whoever the screen was on double. So they probably were going to throw a double at him, but they probably figure if you're just leaving it alone, you know, we're going to take our chances with holiday defending in that situation. Um, yeah. I don't know if anything maybe would put final Brown, play, just fucking maybe put like Jalen on him for the extra. Um, I think you put if you know it's going to be an ISO like that, you put Jalen on him for the extra length because he was doing a really good job contesting the shots. But like I said, I think they're probably expecting the screen and Drew's just so good at fighting through screens. They figured they would have had a double on him. So tough situation. But I mean, at the end of the day, like Murray just hit a sick shot. I don't. I, don't, I can't hate the defense there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's just kind of my. Well, yeah. No, and that's. I don't think that I didn't mean it like that. I just more kind of when I saw that baseline view, it was just sort of like shit. Mm. That was. I feel like he had that from the start you knew it was going in as yeah soon as he um, got it off yeah so i mean that's kind of where i'm at like the end of game stuff i mean like during the whole entire game you could obviously there's like a million there's a couple things i, I could nitpick um well i wouldn't even say nitpick but like the, the offensive re- like it it's it's crazy to me they only had 17 offensive rebounds because it literally felt because i mean <laughs> I as a team i don't know how many shots did they miss as a team uh the hawks were Okay, so they missed over 50 shots. I feel like they right. had an offensive rebound on every single miss. So it's crazy <laughs> to me they only have 17 rebounds. Like, I know. I would, like, honestly almost want to throw well, the challenge flag on that. I feel like there's some other plays where, like, it gets tipped, the ball stays alive, they don't get credit for it. There was that big one at the end where it, they didn't get the offensive rebound, but they t- kept it alive and got the jump yeah. ball. And obviously, you got the ball, like, that doesn't count as an offensive rebound, but it kind of, you know. Obviously, it's things like that. So, I mean, either way, 17 is, is a shitload. Um, but, I mean, you just look at the stats. They had, I think... 10 more total rebounds than us and they had 10 more shot attempts than us so again i thought for the most part our defense was really good and murray was inefficient but you just keep you give them 10 extra shots a game like even mm-hmm. if they only shoot 40 percent, that's eight or 10 extra points and and this time they shot 49 the percent yeah oh yeah so i mean there you go so that's five extra shot makes they're getting from looks that we're giving them that's it's tough to overcome when you shoot 10 more times in a game like again you played good defense and they made tough shots so yeah, it's it was brutal. And that's to it's me, like a chance points too. To me, I mean, all the talk will be about the end of game, like late game execution. Right. To me, the the thing that's like actually concerning, if anything, is offensive rebounds because it seems like at you know the the tough losses we've kind of had this season that have been like this, not just like weird shit happening, just hard fought games that we lose. Mm-hmm. It's like the other teams able to stay in the game largely due to offensive rebounds, and it's um again, it's guys, you know big like kind of down low bully athletic dudes like capella who who are huge um who really give porzingis trouble today i mean again i know porzingis had the good first half but just kind of like need him to find a way to be more active on the glass have better hands or something because we got to find a way to to combat something like that sir it's it's gonna be a real problem obviously you mentioned it before horford out doesn't help but again it's like but right there's going to be times he, when he's not he out there. He was there last yeah. game, and it was a problem last game, too. It's, it's been a problem, like I said, all season. Um, these are the kind of Those are the kind of guys who, who it seems like really give us trouble. And that, like I said, that concerns me, and it's something that is an actual takeaway from this game more than stuff where you're just like, ah, like it's a, you know, a regular yeah, season like the, game. And the shot that, stuff like, is, it's like, it's it cute. It's, it like, uh, it's like a good good topic to kind of go right yeah, yeah. but no i do think that to me that i but mean yeah that's, the offensive that's rebound jarring. is where the game was lost yeah right it was and again, it was just insane how it much went like that bored. last game and we talked last game about how like they needed to clean up the rebound and you'd think they'd go in tonight with after yeah. sitting on they the just two days watching shots, playing the same team staring not putting a body on anybody it was bad it was real yeah, bad it's it's over and over again and again it's just how many capella just by being in there push seemingly like pushing porzingis or whoever around and just getting his hands on the ball keeping it alive uh, he had seven offensive rebounds himself but i bet he kept another five alive that his teammates were able to eventually pull down and you know those are that's so such a backbreaking play too where you play great defense for 24 seconds and then you know you can't even get out 
and again, I mean, what was the fast break points? We were up like 25 2 on fast break points. Fast That's break another... points was uh, 27 to 2 us, and, yeah. they, and they were tw- theirs was uh, 28 to 11 on second chance points. So, yeah, like you said, it's kind right. of how many of fast two. break points more can you get if you're actually getting those offense, the, not giving up the offensive rebounds, right. those are defensive rebounds where you can get out and run. Instead, you're giving up an offensive rebound, they're putting the ball in. Yeah, they were basically the basket taking away our down, best like... offense with, with their offensive <laughs> right. rebounding because right. like, we yeah, were pushing exactly. it so, so well. Right, so that's why those are like doubly backbreaking every time they're scoring on that. And again, I mean, that's that's when you end up seeing a guy eighteen of forty four being like inefficient night. But if you think of how many extra chances Murray got, like if the possession ends with him scoring, it doesn't matter if he, you know, it could, he could go, he probably went like one for three on some possessions tonight. But it's like whatever, it's still <laughs> yeah, it's one possession that ended in two points for them. So yeah, not the most efficient, but it's just it's it's brutal. And that, like I said, that is the thing that probably scares me most. So I don't know what we can do. I mean, we're not going to change who Porzingis is at this point, but again, it seemed mm-hmm. like he kind of disappeared down the stretch um, on offense in the second half. I don't know what they can do. Like the post up has been so effective. I think they need to be more kind of focused and um, make sure that they're not basically, they can't go as long as they did tonight without involving him on offense. Um, he's got to get early touches. We can play out of the post. It's got to be more Derek White running the offense in the fourth quarter. I, I, it's just yeah. crazy we get away from that stuff where as good as the Jays are, get them the ball like off of other stuff. The good basket we had down the stretch was where we threw it into Porzingis on the post, let the other guys cut. That's how Jalen got that elbow jump shot. That's a good look. The other one that uh, Jalen got in the fourth quarter that gave us a three-point lead with like 45 seconds left, same thing. We ran like a horns action with White handling the ball. He got the switch and got Brown the mismatch at the elbow where he can work. I'd rather that than Brown and Tatum going from half court, basically just trying to beat a guy off the dribble. Like, let them catch the ball in advantageous situations. It's not that they shouldn't be the guys to right. get the ball and take the shots. It's just they don't have to do it all by themselves. Let other guys help set them up. It's not like it's not like people want Derek White to ISO for 24 seconds or like we have to throw it into Porzingis and everyone else is out of the play. Just use those guys to bend the defense so it's not as predictable and so that they might be in rotation. And again, when Brown and Tatum catch the ball while the defense is rotating and they react like they're quick first they're dribble off the guy. catch. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of the baskets we scored in the fourth quarter, like Tatum had two, I think, hard and ones where that it was like he was the second side action. The ball came back around to him. He was able to catch it, immediately drive, but the defense couldn't recover, and he got an and one layup twice. Like, I mean, it's yeah, I know this stuff is they, easier said than they, done, but. Well, I just think when they dribble up the court and they just started on the half court and they're just kind of sitting up there dribbling, it is like it, it, they're, they're, they're facing the defender at the defender's most, like, well-prepared, like, situation. Right. So it's like, and right. it's not like they can't. Like, there was plenty of times in this game and in other games where they're able to still do something with that. It's not like they should never take the ball up. I just think that sometimes it right. does. It just like the offense becomes like – just like switching off one of one of those – one of the Jays taking it up. And, again, yeah. it's not that I don't think that they can be successful there. They've, they've had plenty of success doing that. I just think in times like this where the games are really becoming like these grinds, they have mm-hmm. to get back to just like getting the offense, running it through the point guards, specifically Derek yeah. White. But – and, and like yeah, pretty much everything you just said, getting it into a better spot for them, and especially involving Porzingis. Like again, it's like he disappeared, but I just feel like <laughs> it just I don't know. The offense is just it's not running. Right. Sometimes it just right. doesn't run, and this is where it gets concerned because our whole thing all year has been like, mm-hmm. you know, all these things that we saw last year. I'm not really seeing this year, but it's like I don't know. And again, I don't want to, I don't want to pull it out. I don't want to pull the panic button now. No, no, but no. but I just I think it's just it's just lose some of the bad habits. It's like yeah. if all year's been preaching good habits, good habits, good habits, we start mm-hmm. to see bad habits because a little bit concerning. There's just so much kind of ISO, like and just not playing the way we normally have been playing, where we've been super successful. So and, and again, yeah, it's against kind of a similar mold of teams, like these big guys down low or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was it was not it was not pretty. I, I agree. I think Porzingis. I don't know why we don't get Porzingis involved more. In some of these late game actions, like, why can't you right. be the guy taking the shot? Like, yeah, so it's one of those. I don't know. I I gotta watch back the tape to like, I mean, watch him a little closer. If it's one of those things where that like he's just getting kind of iced out, or is he just kind of getting tired and he's you know going into the post less, or is it a combination of both and he's getting realizing he's not gonna get the ball, so he's not even doing it, or like, is it coaching? And again, it's one of those things where it's kind of we're never gonna know the full answer of like why exactly. It is, but uh, either way, at, at a certain point, it's got to become a coaching thing where he makes sure that they are doing it. Um, and again, it's like no one. We're not saying give the ball to him and clear out. Enter the ball into the post. A ton of times he had bogey guarding him. That's a huge mismatch. It's yeah. like only one time they found him like 
at the elbow or in, and he immediately made like a eight, 12 foot jump shot, like no problem. That's there almost every time. Go to that when the offense bogs down. Yeah. And again, a lot of we can generate good threes from getting the ball in the post and kicking it back out. He's been he's become a very good passer out of the post. So it's not like he's some black hole that you throw it down to him and everyone's like, OK, I guess, the, you know, he's going to shoot either yeah. shoot it and like make it or miss it. Like we can start our offense like that. Um, and again, it's just totally lacking. I, I don't again, I, I got to see if that's more. He didn't have the legs for it. It seemed like he wasn't even in there a lot. Um, but yeah, either exactly. Way. I'm not advocating either for like one or person having more or less like don't give it to this person anymore because right. we just like it's just i think when the like it's just you know it when you see it when the offense is doing what it's like <laughs> when the offense is moving oh, yeah. around the way it's supposed to be moving around and the ball is moving yeah. around and, and it just wasn't like i made the meme today that was like the the guy from uh rocky the manager apollo creed's manager was like throw in the damn towel and like pass the damn ball like mm. oh my god they're not doing anything well that, also i mean i thought tonight was kind of a weird night and that it didn't seem like even at any point in the game, our offense was really humming. There was probably like five possessions the whole game where I was like, that's it. Yeah. We had I multiple thought there driving was a little kicks. bit of rust with them not really playing together like this yeah. whole group. There was, but... I think there was th- like three players where I was like, that's it, where we had an extra pass and like the ball was moving, really moving around, uh, had the D in rotation, we're hitting good shots. And I mean, it's no surprise that that was like our best moments, but we just couldn't sustain it really all night. So I, it, tonight it wasn't even really a matter of things like bogging down in the fourth quarter. I think this was more regular just like the whole fourth game, quarter, yeah. super tight game. But yeah, it wasn't like we were had it going and then turned it off or anything like that. It was just a tough game to get going. Again, credit the Hawks. I think people might look at the Hawks and be like, what the hell is this? But um, yeah, I think both- I mentioned earlier, I like the team kind of better without Trey Young in a well, weird yeah, way. Like they're they a much better defensive team. Attack. Yeah, exactly. They're all just one right. guy that you can just pick every much single time. Better defensive go team. I mean, up. Capella obviously kills us. He's a beast. Hunter, if he's going to play like that, uh, you know, he doesn't usually, but he was awesome tonight. Bogey always seems to play well. Vic Krejci, this guy. Is, free, the, uh, is he in relation us. to uh, David Krejci? Do we know? <laughs> no, I, I think it's like it's like Smith. It's, over yeah, there. I was going to say that's what I thought too, yeah. Um, but <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know, as far as to what you're saying too, where it's like I didn't really feel like we turned it off. I did feel like this game, both teams were playing like the exact same for the entire game. Yeah, for like being yeah it was an intense like, defensive neither game. Neither team like changed anything. Like we weren't playing well. Uh, mm-hmm. And the Hawks were playing really well, and it just ended the game. It's yeah. like they're playing well versus our playing not very well. They're just were, I would say, one point better yeah. than us. So, um, yep. yeah, I think uh, <laughs> they, one made, thing, they made the last shot. That yeah, that. one That's thing a, I wanted to get into too with uh, Mur- the we were talking about Murray too. So I have a stat. Mm-hmm. This is a Dick Life special. So Murray's only the second player in NBA history with at least forty-four field goal <laughs> attempts, including nineteen shots from three. Um. Do you have Absurd. any kind of guess? <laughs> I can tell you it was on April 13, 2016. Um, Who the, had what? That many? Another player had 22, 44 was 22 shots, and 19 50. threes. Yeah, it was 22 for 50 with six from 23 from deep. And it's finished with 60. Harden? No, it's actually a great what? one. It was Kobe's Westbrook? last game. Oh, <laughs> last game. oh, yeah, okay. Kobe also was the last time someone shot that many shots against us, against the Celtics, right? 44 <laughs> shots against yeah. the Celtics. So yeah, I mean yeah. it was. It's you can say whatever you want about. It. I feel like in in a win, the efficiency stuff kind of goes the window, whatever. Like I think if he yeah. didn't shoot that much and score and that he much, came they through down win. the stretch. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't like uh, just like a total just one thing. I did think. Yeah. I did think it was a little like. I think he was celebrating a little bit much, but I guess this is just an emotional uh, The emotions were just high well, in this game. I don't know. I, it, yeah, I think so. Going back, you mentioned at the beginning, like what their problem is. But I mean, I think a, you know, we played them in the playoffs last year, this yeah. team, and it was, and it was a little testy. I think it's fair to say. Um, and then obviously, you know, they're battling for the play in and they have had a very disappointing season, but they're like, I think want to, you know, make something of it. And then I think there is a little extra for that team too, with like Trey going out and being written off. I think some of those guys, especially DeJounte has a little edge where he's like, I'm now it's my turn to be yeah, like, I'm good. The I'm guy. Like, I, yeah, I want to, <laughs> right. I think he's like, I want to show that we can be a good team. And I mean, there's been a lot of rumors already. It almost, I think is kind of like an audition. You look at games like this and you're like, ah, Trey Young might be on the on trademark at this off season. I can kind of see the vision. Like if they can get back even, you know, like two or three 
not stars, but like a few really good players to add to this mix. You could, you could see the foundation of how that could be a good team, depending on what they can get for young. So I think that's part of it too. I think they know that the play is coming up. And again, they know that at this point they're the 10 seed. So the only chance they have of making it in is the eight seed and they'd play us. So this could be a, a playoff matchup. If they make it, it will be. Yeah. And then you got the fact that we just played them on Monday. 30 point game that got intense, obviously at the end with all that uh, come back tonight. And I think again, the Celtics had their starters back. We came out pretty intense. Look at the minutes our guys played. We took this game seriously. We wanted to win it. That was like a playoff, like <laughs> feel and atmosphere the whole game. Well, so they yeah, rose to it. I mean, they're, I, I don't know. They were, they were fighting and, and you've got the fact that, you know, we're the Celtics. We got the one seed locked up with the best record. They want to prove something. This is their chance. We're, trying for it they're trying for it so you get you got a lot of fire both ways i, I mean i like it for a regular season game i think it's yeah. good this is good for the celtics not well, just go full joe but you know there's no who who had the quote like there's no such there's no losses just like just win, like you win opportunities or you to learn or you something win or you learn. yeah <laughs> yeah you win or you learn which so. i guess and this is kind of goes to what we talked about a little bit last uh i think last episode about like we we like there's been so much time where that we haven't played together because of injuries that it's kind of like everyone's like oh right. just rest everyone it's like I don't know I kind of feel like this is an example of why we have to we kind of uh, with with the injuries the last couple yeah. weeks it's almost put us in a position where obviously you know we're close we're I think the magic number is four or whatever to clinch the the number mm-hmm. one overall seed but I just it's like I don't know I don't want to rest too much because it seems like it felt like guys things were a little discombobulated mm-hmm. definitely on the offensive end like, yeah just because no, guys I, I... were playing roles they aren't used to. <laughs> Saw way less Pritchard uh, than we, we we have been seeing, so it's just kind of yeah. like, you know, I did love the Pritchard press, though. I do think that that's... that was one of the one of the best plays of the game. Yeah, I think that, that was <laughs> truly. I, I don't know. We shouldn't have got away. I from had the that Pritchard in my notes. Press. I was hoping that was going to be a, a turning point, but um, not so much. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, but I mean, again, I think like again, not to be you know going optimist on this, but seriously, like we will gain much. This game is so much more valuable to the team right now than if we had gone out and beat them by 30. Like this is the kind of game we need to be in all the starters. I know it's overtime, but you look at all the starters played almost 40 minutes. Tatum played 45 minutes. Like that's like what a playoff game is going to be like to play a close game for 50 plus minutes, whatever is uh, it's good practice. So obviously it didn't go well, but I'd rather it not go well now than in the playoffs. Like, so now we're like, okay, we really need to work on this stuff. Let's <laughs> yeah. fucking do we it. We just now. need to box out. Just like, when yeah, you, no, when they but shoot I mean, the ball, the... don't look at it, find the nearest person and fucking put a ball yeah. on your All the stuff in general, you know, if the last possession is a problem, like, we got oh, three chances be. to practice tonight. That's good, you know, and the, and the last <laughs> yeah. one was better than the right. ones before yeah, it. So, like, sure. that's the only way we're going to get better that's is by doing it. That's the only way I suppose so, we could look at like it, Like I yeah. said, that possession is a nightmare, but in the grand scheme of things, these games don't mean shit in March. Like, so go through that now, and at some point, they can all look around and be like, hey, let's clean this the fuck up. Well, I hope that that is what happens. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that uh, would be nice. Yeah, um, I guess just uh, a couple the other... The only way it's going to happen. Couple other like final things that I was had on. Uh, those refs were brutal. I was gonna say that I was wanna, like, but I didn't want to be a ref guy, but no, I, sh- and it, I don't mean it because I mean they were brutal both ways. Like I think that they were yeah, like no, just, that that technical and just to show how bi- unbiased the I am, choppy. the one I'll lead with is the one against Trey Young. Like that's hysterical. The guy's just in right? street clothes. Like at any time, like I feel like if that happens, like whatever the person said has to be so bad that they got they end up like suspended or something like that. Like. You know, it's like yeah. if you're gonna t- call a T on a guy sitting no on the need. bench in, dr- in in trucking street clothes, like <laughs> he better have called that lady like the c word or something like that. He better have yeah. gone said something crazy because yeah. if it's just like oh he just was like bad call and I'm just like upset, like so all stupid. those they were so rattled that whole that whole group, not just uh, that yep. one ref. They were all everyone was just so rattled, and there was that one stretch where it just it, it just became like uh like. This like hair trigger, like ah, uh, like attack, attack, yeah. attack, attack, attack. Like <clears throat> it was, it was very bad, very, no, very the bad. Te- the texts were bad. There was a lot of bad calls too. I didn't like, I didn't like Joe's first challenge, even though he won it, just because again, I, I didn't think that was a high. Like the return Reward. on it wasn't worth it at that early in the game at all. And then he used the second one in the second quarter, which I thought was a good challenge. I can't believe they didn't overturn that fucking Jalen charge when the guy like jumped into him. Should have been an and one. Yeah, that, that was, was like, a good danger, use of the yeah. challenge. I, again, I can't believe he didn't win it, but that's that's why you can't use the first one because now you're out of challenges for the game, and there was plays that I thought were challengeable, didn't have a challenge, so that was frustrating. He should have won it, but even if he won it, we it would have been the second one. We wouldn't have got one back either way. Um, did you think, so think Jalen should have just passed it ahead to Tatum on that play too? Like It looked like Tatum was way past his guy. 
I was, I, I thought mean, he was going to alley oop it up to him or something. He like could have, but like again, I, that's it's just so ridiculous that that wasn't an and one. Like he made the and one. Yeah. He shouldn't, <laughs> it's hard to rip him apart. It's just an awful fucking call. I yeah, can't believe fair. they looked at that and didn't change it. Like is absolutely preposterous. Uh, Raphael Devers just went yard, a little two run home run for the Red Sox. They're on the board this season. Whoa, so. whoa, 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 whoa! This is this very anti John Henry podcast. We're not, we're not giving any free ads oh. to the to that team. I mean, I, I'm, I'm rooting for the Red Sox. <laughs> Sorry to say, just what, just yeah. what they want you to hear. Just what they want to hear. Sorry, go Sox. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, will, but yeah, no, the refing... wa- I'm only gonna watch the Sox via illegal streams. That's the only way I'll do it. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. That's my I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, just continuing to go. The refing I thought was so bad both ways. The tacks were only part of it, and then it was in that sequence where I mentioned that challenge. The next play was challenge two, where it was Tatum went in and he hit the guy's face. Not even a bad call, but it was two challenges in like a minute. So they went, it felt like eight minutes without playing. Like the game just felt very choppy. Mm-hmm. A lot of whistles, reviews, stuff like that. There was, I think that was part of how we didn't really get into a lot of flow. And it was such like a back and forth game, which made it a good game, but it just felt like there was no like open back and forth moments, except for that one stretch in the third where guys were just like blocking shots left and right. That's frustrating. That also, it didn't like really end up being a huge call because it wasn't a shooting foul, but that foul they called on white when Murray just like fell out of bounds. Oh yeah, and it was like twenty seconds left. It's like how how are you gonna call that a foul? But you're right in front of him. His like literally his hand was on him, but he wasn't didn't push him at all. They, they literally have no idea like, what they're doing. It's Jesus awful. Jesus Christ, so bad. Um, yeah, it seemed like there's a lot of tough calls. It seems like there's always a lot of tough calls, but that's uh kind of just part of the game, I think, at this point. Um, gotta mention Jalen's dunk at the end of the third quarter. Just monstrous, un- unreal, uh, monstrous game poster dunk. Um. Not not much to add, just an awesome dunk. It's pretty cool that we have a player who routinely does that kind of thing. <laughs> um, I feel like it'd been a little bit. I mean, he was due for one. He was due to put someone in the, the old graveyard. Yeah, I wonder when people start making more uh, more business decisions because mm. it's, it's got to be coming at some point, I would think. Did you see uh, Cecil Green's halftime show? Did you? Have... I didn't see it. No, I mean, well, it, not like did you see the... that the cl- they, I've just found some clip online. Yeah, that he just did. Uh, no. He just did the full blown like uh, the "fuck you" song, just like rip, letting it rip, letting it fly. Yeah, it's also like I feel like that's a very, uh, I don't know, like oh, no, I don't want to say beneath him, but that's well, like, did you hear like, not a great Drew gig. on the call? He's like, is he having <laughs> no. little financial troubles? Like, what's he doing doing like yeah, a Thursday was, night? I, mean, I was kind of thinking like, the same thing because he did the uh, M- I think he did like the NBA Finals or like that. He did like a. Uh, like you open yeah, up the NBA. Yeah. He did some other like big show, but I mean, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. They might just be like, we'll give you like Maybe fifty thousand dollars to do this. Yeah, it's like, he's like, I'm in Atlanta anyway. Games anyway. Lives in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah, he could live there. Goes to the games. I mean, it's good work if you can get it. Don't get me wrong. I would gladly do a live <laughs> Chuddy's Corner at the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, I'm not, so. not ripping on him. I just thought it was. I was just surprised to hear it more. Yeah, uh, no, it was a little strange. Tad strange. Is what I'm saying. I thought. um Drew looked good for the most part, so that's just you know. Yeah, that was good. Back out there, if there was any concern, as he had missed what five games in a row, it's not nothing. Um, he had heavily, heavily padded out there. Looked like he was wearing like a sweatshirt under his jersey yeah. almost, but uh, he seemed fine. He didn't didn't seem to miss a beat shooting the ball. Um, and so you know, I thought it was I thought it was pretty much a normal Drew out there. So good to get him back in the lineup and. See him getting back in there with those so guys. So to get, to, your, get, to, get to one of your things you were saying about, uh, like, kind of, like, trying some things out down the stretch, Missoula in his postgame said that the Celtics were purposefully allowing Porzingis to defend DeJounte Murray on switches because it was good practice reps for one through five switching, of which the Celtics haven't done much of. So, yeah, I so, mean, I don't disagree. Yeah, again, yeah, I mean, maybe um, – Maybe that is just kind of like maybe we have just sort of said we don't we're not too worried about wins and losses now. Let's get like you know these these moments in between. I mean, as a fan, I wish I knew that. Just kind of it's still like excruciating for us, um, <laughs> but that's why we're gonna you know we're gonna try to keep ourselves nice and even yeah. keeled. But I no, just saw that quote. Again, I think it was, like you said, just good to get all those guys out there playing so much together where they have been out. It was it's really crazy to see even as much as the team has been winning, obviously before these two Hawks games. Um, in the last before this, what it was in the last ten games, they've had all different starting lineups. 
and they've had 11 different guys start too. So that's the thing. It's not even like it's been one guy in and out here and there. Yeah, like yeah, 11 yeah. different guys totally starting. Different, it's crazy. Yeah. Can you name all 11? Because I was like, whoa. Uh, There's a couple of weird ones. I mean, so is right this now, like, but... is, is Drew included? Like, is this yeah, like, yeah. okay, so it was the, five the regular tonight. starting five plus yeah. Horford, mm-hmm. Richard Hauser. Did Tillman get any starts? Tillman, Tillman got a start. I feel like I'm just listing our roster. Tillman, well, yeah, it's Gordon basically Everett, and then O'Shea Brissett. Yeah. Yeah. I guess yeah, that was pretty but... easy. I was just trying yeah, to think, I I guess... like, I'm trying to think, like, who's alive? Like, there's no one really that's, yeah. that, that's tricky to confuse <laughs> with. But, but I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, that is I guess, is, like, who else crazy. could it be? But, yeah, it's just yeah. That, that many it's guys. It's like a football is, roster. It's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's impressive that they've been able to do all that. So, I mean, again, I hope that this last month and, you know, they call it Mickey Mouse March for a reason in the NBA. You're not supposed to you're not supposed to believe anything you see in the month of March historically is the way it usually plays out. Um, Love that. So, Glad we again, got this in on March 28th. Yeah, and it, 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 it truly is the time to be experimenting again. So we we've been coming on the pod all year saying the regular season is about trying stuff and tinkering and then they do it and lose. We can't be like, what the fuck? <laughs> um all right yeah do you have anything else on this game i know you have a ton for around the nba and i also <laughs> know you want to be uh suited in for the end of the march madness so what do you got for around the nba straight facts um so yeah we've had a few nights off i'll just rip through stuff chime in whenever you want i'll start going back to the other night the clippers and the sixers just played back-to-back games the first one the clippers lost to the sixers with no um Joel Embiid, obviously, pretty kind of pathetic home loss for them. And after the game, Ty Lue was asked if his team has an identity, and he said, yeah, it's that we're soft. So not exactly <laughs> what you want your coach to be saying about you at this point in the season. But um, That's awesome. That's they great. did bounce back and beat the same Sixers team in the second time. Almost lost to them. Um, again, not the most inspiring performance, but they did pull it out. Crazy game. I don't know if you saw the end of this one. No. Kawhi was amazing. It was a vintage Kawhi minute. He hit two and ones. Uh, he hit an and one. Then Philly, to give him the lead, Philly took the lead back. He had another and one. Then he had a, a, a block down the stretch, and then he had a crazy block on Kelly Oubre. Went for a dunk. He pinned it off the backboard. Uh, for, it actually got wedged in for a jump ball. Then Philly won the jump ball. Uh, Oubre went in at the buzzer. Paul George went up to contest, was kind of moving. They collided, and then it looked like Kawhi came in for a crazy block that was almost goaltending. It was actually after the buzzer, um, but the, it could have been a foul. It could have been a goaltend. Ubre and Nick Nurse both went absolutely ballistic. I saw them Oubre going ballistic. Went, yeah, Ubre went up to each ref and said, "Did the you're a bitch, you're a bitch, you're a bitch, your mom's a bitch, your grandma's a bitch." Uh, so so he just did he actually say psycho. that? Because people were saying, and I was trying to read his lips. I guess I'm not as good a lip reader, but I'm a terrible he... lip reader. I'm just going with what people said. Right, but I thought, yeah. Enough people were saying it that I didn't think right. it was just a joke. Oh, yeah. It was once you it was out number there, of tweets, and it was like legit it. accounts were tweeting it too. It wasn't just like. The online pranks. There's uh, yeah. your your boy Dunk Centel or whatever. It NBA was, um, Centel, shout yeah. out NBA It wasn't Centel. Centel. It wasn't Centel. Got me it was... so good. Those are the early Chetty days. No, um, I learned a lot that... since then. <laughs> if that wasn't what really happened, then so be it. But I think it. it I, I'm pretty sure it was, and he uh, did do like a big apology press conference. I did after, see him after, so... like yeah, right away. He's, uh, yeah, well, he so... probably was like, "I'm gonna it's so fucking fun." Um, but then the refs did admit in the po- in the press conference that they missed the call, which I, oh, I think nice. is so, so stupid. Like, yes, he's a nice little. If everyone seemed to cooler heads I, prevailed, I but I also like don't even I don't know I don't, I don't even know if I, that I agree. Like I hate when they do that, and then it wasn't like a blatantly like just missed the call. It was a super bang bang play. Like no need to to see. Yeah. Like what is who does that benefit? I, I I don't know, but whatever. Um, fun fun pair of games out in LA between those two teams. You had also the um or that one was in Philly back in Philly, but you had Harden getting booed in Philly. And then Mm. afterwards he said, he's like, I don't even get why they boo me. I don't know if you heard that. It was pretty funny. (laughs) Uh, Press conference. Just can't figure it out. I I can't imagine why. Uh, (laughs) So weird. So weird. <laughs> Philly, uh, yeah, usually so embracing of, yeah, yeah. and understanding. They're of usually that so kind of stuff, like, calm yeah. and collected and forgiving <laughs> with stuff like that. It's right. still so bizarre. Yeah. So, uh, unless you mean like, I don't know why it. they're not booing me. I would expect more. they do something. I don't know why they're worse. not booing me more. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. I don't know why they're booing me. I was yeah. expecting them to throw a battery at my head. Right. Uh, it was honestly pretty subdued booing. So maybe that is what he meant. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, then we got a got to shout out Demontis Sabonis. Guy doesn't get a ton of love, but just set the NBA record with his fifty fourth straight double double. Leads the league in double doubles. Leads the league in triple doubles. Um, you know, 
say what you want about his defense and about the way you know things go for him in the playoffs, but he is one hell of a player, at least in the regular season. How um, many was it? Fifty four straight games. Fifty four. He's made it fifty five, I think, since last night. Um, with another one. It's but crazy. That's still crazy. And he has like on the season. I mean, there's only a handful of games he doesn't have a double double. Uh, like, yeah, like I said, leads the league straight. in triple doubles with 25. He's only the fifth player in NBA history to get 25 or more triple doubles in a season. So that's pretty crazy. Um, he's leading the league in rebounds with 13.7 and averaging over eight assists a game. So pretty ridiculous uh, what he's doing out there. And again, I think if it wasn't for like basically Jokic, we'd all be looking at someone as like, holy shit, like the way this guy plays. But yeah, um, tough time for him, I guess. But uh, the Kings, they've been. Tricky to figure out. They're falling. They're in risk of being in that play-in, which would it would be pretty disappointing if they get into that play-in and get a tough matchup. Don't make the playoffs after uh, the vibes were kind of so high after last year. This year they had some expectations and may not be able to live up to it. Again, some of that is that the West is just really damn good. So mm-hmm. tough to be mad at them. Um, we had the Bucks with a crazy blown lead the other night in LA playing against the Lakers with no LeBron. They were up 19 and the Bucks finished regulation on a 26 to seven run or the Lakers for sorry, finished on a 26 to seven run and then won the game in double OT crazy game. Um, obviously all around, uh, Anthony Davis, just absolutely absurd. It seems like whenever LeBron's out, he plays amazingly. Uh, Reeves was awesome down the stretch. Just so wild game the Lakers, kind of getting hot at the right time i think they've won five six in a row now uh first time all year they're the highest most games over 500 they've been in austin reeves's career which i thought was a funny stat um <laughs> as much as i hate to say it, it's looking like they're at least probably safe although i mean only like two three games up they're still a bad losing streak away but we're getting pretty close to the end it's it's looking good for them and they'll at least make the play in um i don't know if they're yeah, they're the eight play. but yeah it's probably gonna happen and az just awesome game um that same Night, we just had an awesome game between the Thunder and the Pelicans. Um, great back and forth game. Pelicans made a huge comeback. Uh, Thunder pulled it out at the end on a 12-0 run in, to finish out the game. Some serious clutch performing. Um, also, people have been afraid to say it, but I think all jokes aside, we could say Josh Giddy playing unreal. He's been the question mark for that team. Um, they say he's the guy people are going to leave alone, but... He's been killing it lately on both ends and making and taking his threes, uh, which is huge for that team as that's one of their biggest weaknesses. But he's Yikes. been lights out. So got to tip your hat to him. He made a shot from gotta. literally lying. Uh, is down. that what you got to do, huh? I mean, he's out there playing. I don't, I'm not going to lie to the people. He's playing playing really good ball. I so. did love Dylan Brooks and that other guy who was trying to help up, just like shoving. Gideon, Unreal. Like, I, I don't want you to help me up. Like, don't that was a hilarious moment. Um, so that I was going to get into that because that was last night. That was the next game. Rockets Thunder, one of the best games of the season. Uh, also went to overtime. Super fun. This Rockets team, man, can't say enough. The Jalen Green leap. I know I just basically said don't believe anything you see in March, but I'm going to break <laughs> my own rule <laughs> about five minutes later because Jalen Green looks like a fucking star. He's playing so well lately. Um. And the Rockets, as a result, are just playing so well. It's kind of coincided with Shingun being out, which is a little weird, but, I mean, kind of makes sense. Obviously, Jalen Green, more room to operate. They're playing more of a five-out style. They've got Ahmed Thompson basically playing center. Um, and they're just kind of – they've basically put in some high-powered, fast-paced, super-athletic offense to go along with what was already a really good defense. Um, Rockets are now, I think, 12-1 and since March started. I believe that was the Celtics record in 2022 in March with Ime Udoka. So similar kind oh, of wow. turning it on down the stretch here. Um, interesting to watch, but uh, the Rockets have moved up to like maybe the number one most fun league pass team lately. It seems like every game they're in is unreal. Jalen Green is a human highlight factory, as is Thompson. Um, some of these other guys, Jabari Smith, you mentioned he's been playing really well. He's essentially been their center now. So they're leaning into super small ball, but with a ton of like long athletic wings who can defend. Fun to watch. And uh, they're making a push now. They're they're just one one game behind the Warriors, and they they haven't been losing. Those teams play each other. I think uh, next week at some point. I don't know the exact date, but that'll be like almost kind of like a pseudo playoff game. So very exciting stuff coming up here. The Rockets are fired up. Uh, you had Tari Eason going on like some social media last <laughs> night and saying like the Warriors are scared, the Rockets are coming, this and that. He was doing kind of like Warriors the, come yeah. out to play, which which I, I, I don't, don't know about. I, I do don't that. hate it. But yeah, I, I hate it, but... Do it. Also, I like Tari Eason, but he's out for the season. So just, people weren't <laughs> clear on that. Like, it's he oh will have God. not, he won't up, be playing. If they end up playing the Warriors <laughs> and lose, that guy's going to look like a fucking dick. Yeah, not sure what to do with that one. But uh, 
props to the Rockets. They pulled this game out in OKC yeah. in overtime. Awesome win. No uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander for the Thunder last night. He sat out. He's not, not been doing great lately. Might be nursing some kind of injury. Just super fatigued. He got the night off. Um, and Chet, Chet fouled out with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. So this was, was a super weird game. Then both teams were going super small. The pace, the highlights, the shot making. Awesome. Awesome game. Uh, I highly recommend watching both of those teams as much as you can. I do have a quick stat on those those Texas teams. This is I saw yep. this on uh, NBA Reddit. So shout out to NBA Reddit. Uh, the Houston Rockets and the Dallas Mavericks are combined 11-0 mm. since Pornhub was banned in Texas. So they're huh? locked in. They're focused. What I don't so, know what the Spurs are doing. The Spurs must be doing something <laughs> sketchy because they they do not they have not been undefeated, but. I thought that was just an interesting stat. Ever since, uh, is that uh, Ted Cruz t- knows what he's doing? You're saying, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess. Well, because I don't know, he's always he's he's, looking out for. He's, the I think, he's always been like a rock. I mean, he goes where everyone's doing well, but but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was it's time for the Rockets to lock <laughs> in. So they, uh, they, them and the Mavericks combined eleven and zero. So yeah, okay, impressive Fascinating stuff. stuff. Um, yeah, something yeah, keep is. this keep this up. They might cost the state something dear to us all. <laughs> if that's a hey, if that's the price, that's what it pay. takes. Yeah, I'm gonna do a two month hiatus. <laughs> yeah, all right, at least at least for two yeah, yeah. months. Till, it's like it's like the old LeBron, back. like zero dark thirty, but it's just like for like yeah. Pornhub. Like we're banning Pornhub until the Celtics bring home Banner eighteen. Period. I think yeah, you'll you can at least probably get some support from the Chetty Heads on that one. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm sure I can just ban it. We can just ban it from the solidarity of the Celtics. Self ban. Yeah, self self ban. That's fair. Um. We mentioned the Warriors, who are the Rockets are hot on their heels. They pulled out a huge win last night in Orlando. Uh, really impressive win for them, but it was had to become more impressive because the story of the game was your boy Draymond Green getting ejected three and a half minutes in, getting his second technical. Uh, he got one right away for arguing a call that was the right call. Quickly got teed up. The ref basically told him to stop. Took more than he probably would from any other player in the league. Um, and sure enough, Draymond gets teed up. He obviously knew he was going to get teed up because he didn't even look back at the ref to see the tee coming. It was like he just said his final word and just walked right to the locker room after a hard fought, you know, three and a half minutes on the job. Really <laughs> nice night of work for him. Curry, I have I don't know if I've ever seen such like weird raw emotion out of Curry. He looked like he was almost crying on the court as yeah. this was happening. It was very weird and one of those almost where it's yeah, like he was coming to terms. News. Yeah, but it was honestly like kind of jarring to see Steve Carr was like consoling him. And it was one of those things where it's like your friend who's <laughs> like, with, uh, we made the jokes about Draymond all year, but that reminded me of like your friend who's like a recovering addict and you think they're good. And then you're just like, Oh, you catch them. You're like, they've been doing drugs. Like, like, <laughs> it's like, he's like, sat, like, it's like he was realizing in real time. Yeah. Like he's really never going to change. Like, yeah, yeah, he's, there's damn just it. no yeah. hope. Like, <laughs> um, like I really tried to try my best. Thought he was doing well, but he just got himself ejected. Yeah, um, I, I so. think that this is kind of they ended up winning the game, right? Because I was thinking the same they thing. Did. If they lost, it would have been yeah. like a bigger yeah. story. But I feel um, like it's just kind of no, eh. huge right. win for them. Ever Wiggins had one of his better games of the year. Curry had a bad game, but had three huge clutch plays down the stretch. Hit the dagger three. Did his night night celebration, which is just so demoralizing it when you're really on the other is. end. Yeah, of that, uh, the worst. But got to tip your cap to him it's it's a pretty good one um it is effective mm. um and then after the game in the aftermath uh <laughs> basically draymond went on i don't know if it was on his podcast or he, he just talks into space at this point but he basically clapped back at tari eason of the rockets uh saying oh, he's like that it was like a clown move by him or whatever which is just like maybe just like go a day without talking <laughs> like you didn't even play like basically in the game uh yeah. you cost the team well and i don't no know that even... tari wasn't even playing i feel like that is it is kind okay, of but a... again just let someone else talk like <laughs> i guess but so you said Dr- Draymond's not playing either. Yeah. yeah yeah well you, and i did but I, fairly enough i did but Draymond, you don't need to go respond after what just happened and everyone from Draymond to Curry to Curry, basically no one was defending him at all in the press conference. They're just like he has to know better. Like he deserves to get tossed, and he has to know better. And just like yeah, like, Draymond said that for a too. long time. You know, he's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like he just gets a look in his eyes. Like maybe he does have a problem. <laughs> We're just maybe not. Yeah, he's a dick. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's just like <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not like a. Like uh, when I grew up, you just called that just being a dickhead. Like I don't know. It's not like a yeah. issue. But... No, but it's. I mean, that one to me, it's. Three minutes into the game, how can you not help yourself? Just stop. Like, just literally stop. What? 
You don't need to argue for four minutes because of the foul call. I don't call. know. It's, it's the, the same the reason game. that like it, like my dad can't just help but like berate the bar back at or like a busboy <laughs> at a restaurant. Like it's like you know we've been here for five minutes. I know, but like yeah, just get the man his fucking diet coke. Yeah. God damn it! <laughs> it's like so I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, um, do makes you sense think... to you and I, <laughs> right? Or do you think that Draymond is just done, or they're they're all just done and no, they know well, it's done, I, I and think, they're like, yeah. I think yeah. no, but I mean, like he's done with this team, and he's like ready to leave and go team up with like KD or LeBron, and he's just like fuck uh, you, I'm out of here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know either. Like I said, it's yeah, yeah. I would think there's some more explanation than what we're seeing on the. I surface, just think when they're not when they're not like dominating everyone, they don't really know how to. It's like they don't know how to act when they're not like the best of everyone who's there. Like they're just kind of like I guess uh, they don't know like wh- how to. It's like. You're, all that you're shit battling that he does. for your lives as the ten seed. You're half a game yeah, up. That, you're playing like a brain good playoff team on the road. It's that. a huge. That's then that's a problem. Well, yeah, but I, but I think it's because I think it's just like they've just been so successful. Just that's that all it boils like, down to that he just can't even think in the moment to like know that yeah. you just can't fucking do this. Like, yeah, I think he's just I used to this, not, not this. It's alarming. Matter. Yeah, it's alarming. It's, for sure. I thought he's this alarming. was alarming, even, but like even for him, this was to me like mm. whoa. Like really? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what else? Yeah, it'd be fun to watch. I know there's one more big story. Is that we're getting into next? Because that's the one I want to talk about too. Um. Yep. There's obviously one more big one before that. Got to mention uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers in absolute free fall. They lost to the Hornets last night. They've officially fallen out of the three seed. They got passed by the Knicks. Donovan Mitchell still not coming back. Darius Garland had a look, it landed his ankle badly last night. So mm-hmm. things are getting ugly fast for the Cavaliers who were looking like a darling of the league for a while. Looked like they were going to get the two seed. Now they might not even have home court in the first round um, and they don't have the guys healthy anyway. So that might not even matter. Uh, so the Cavs may be who we thought they were, so to speak. And then the big one that I assume you're referring to today, news coming out that a thing that I think a lot of people just assumed was a done deal for a long time as it had been agreed upon years ago. Glenn Taylor announcing that the sale of the Minnesota Timberwolves will not go through. Uh, Alex Rodriguez and Mark Lowry agreed to buy the team for $1.5 billion in 2021. I think it was that long ago. Um, And the the payment structure, they agreed on what they were going to pay in like terms over a long period of time. And apparently Taylor is saying they failed to meet one of those deadlines. um, And that basically the deal's off. And now the team is not for sale, which is just, (laughs) <laughs> crazy uh a rod and Lori's group came out and basically said that's not true and that the guy just has seller's remorse and doesn't want to sell the team and basically now <laughs> yeah. is realizing like this is gonna get it. good so he's just looking for a reason to back out of it but I, there have been rumors for a long time that Lori and rodriguez like don't have the um didn't have the funding and that they were like really scraping by there were rumors out that they're reaching out to like real real heavy hitters to try to borrow money or whatever so i was like i don't know who to believe um, but now Taylor also saying that he's not even going to sell the team because he's basically reconsidered and he's like, yeah. wants to win. And the team, he's like, the team's now. good now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, it's like now the team's valued for two and a half billion, like more than double what he agreed to sell it for two years ago. And the team's good. And he has one of the best young players in the league who could be like the face of the league, at least for American players for a long time. He's kind of like, yeah, I actually think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's very believable. To th- like, I, I don't know. I, I can't say that he's necessarily wrong. I think, it's probably a little of both where he probably is right that maybe they did something that was like a minorly loophole of breaking the deal. And he's also just like being a dick and capitalizing on that. Cause he probably was looking for a reason. Yeah. So it's probably a, a little of this, a little of that, but if it goes to court, yeah. um, it would just be cool to see like, cause then if they have to start re- discovering like, and, texts and stuff yeah, out, yeah. I mean, it'd just be cool to see how like, well, I feel like the billionaires are texting each other to like, well, someone's going to, the NBA is going to have to pick. All right, hold on a second. I can't have, I don't like, know. Like you're like the, well, the NBA you're playing... owners group chat leaking like that'd be crazy. <laughs> well, well, right. So I mean, that's what everyone's rooting for. I just want to see how they're how these guys are communicating as they're like making these. I deals bet you they all like are wicked shitty at typing on text. Like, I feel sure. like all well, is old people, but but like my that's probably true. The, the whole once so when the first thing came when it first came out, I just, just sort of assumed like all right, well, I I thought that Aaron already owned the team. I was like, I've learned a lot today. I thought that he already owned the team, <laughs> but apparently he didn't. It's like this structure thing, whatever. When the guy first came out and said that, I was just like, oh, all right. Well, I guess, you know, he's walking away. And then when they came out and were basically like, no, like the team, it's sold. Like you sold it to us. It's already been sold. So now I'm like almost picturing the uh, tail that it's Glenn Taylor is his name, right? Like yeah. Glenn Taylor's like statement almost sounds to me like 
like Michael Scott's like ba- declaring bankruptcy thing where it's just like <laughs> we're off the market. It's like it's like dude, like no, it's like already done. Like you know, it's like the people of my like right. old miles coming back being like we've decided not to sell. <laughs> it's just like yeah, well, it's yeah. like I don't know. So um, right. it, it's going to be very interesting how this plays out because there's a lot of things in, at play. Like I think one, like the owners are going to be kind of in a weird spot because I would assume that some of them have been like supportive of like the A-Rod, whatever purchase and stuff like that. They might even be like more in favor of it because I think that that probably that like name recognition and stuff probably helps the team or whatever. It seems like it already has, but yeah, it helped yeah. the Timberwolves. Like I think they've been viewed in a much better light, even since the deal was publicized. And, yeah. Like you said, people and kind but, of have the, you've seen the shift. They, A-Rod and Lori have been sitting there courtside going to games and that. Yeah. So like, They've been present but, as owners already. And Glenn Taylor was considered one of like the shittiest owners in the league. He was the only owner to get suspended before Donald Sterling did. Um, and just obviously that's awesome. historically shitty franchise led by shitty ownership. So I think this was like a breath <laughs> of fresh air between this new ownership group who's obviously coming in with like excitement and fresh ideas, a celebrity that you kind of know. Yes, and yes. This is all stuff this... I was saying. I was still uh, I was a little of a tape. <laughs> yes, yes. These are all things I was saying. Yes. Uh, but but like the other thing is it puts I think the owners because I think the NBA is, is definitely is like a little bit of like an old boys club type thing too with some of the older owners. So it's almost and again I think and they all like so that I think they'll probably be like they'll like I don't know for some reason I'm just picturing like the uh, Bulls owner like Rise Rise Dysdorf or whatever. Rise Dorf. Yeah. Picture like him and like some like other people like that like the old owners that are going to be like. Glenn Taylor, and like they'll probably be some of the newer ones that like you know, A Rod is like the young, sexy new owner. Um, and but the, what yeah. they all have in common is that they all probably have some fucked up text messages that they don't that like a lawsuit. But but like this is one of those things too, where if you're either one of those people, like how do you like wow, neither one of them is going to back down, like it's going to have to get settled somehow. And so I don't know if it's going to be like because, like you said, too, they're scraping the money. So like the, the other thing with the, you know, the NBA might just sort of be like. You do have to sell it, but they'll agree to a higher number. But if they were scraping by for the number they already had, then who the fuck knows? I mean, a has got money. I don't know if he has that kind of money. I'm sure that no, no, Lori's no. probably the – yeah, I don't know who. For sure. But, for sure. But still, I mean, that – well, that's the other thing too, or even the owners might like them more for like reputation-wise. Like they'd be better faces of the team. But at yeah. the end of the day, they're going to be like, well, if you guys are too poor to even – do these like partial payments to get the team. Then like, I don't know. That's true. They're about too. to have this new media deal. They're about to have expansion. They're probably looking at it. Like these teams are going to be worth even more in the future. Um, yeah. Why do we want to bring in these pores who can, can't even pay a measly 1.5 billion? Like that's it would be pretty funny if like, <laughs> if the trade, if the sale doesn't go through and like all of like the players down on the Wolves are just like, all right, I, I, I <laughs> like if like Gary Anthony Edwards, like, well, I don't know what his contract status is, but he's probably just like, well, I definitely thought I was going to be with A Rod yeah. and them, like you know, because like the players have to obviously have some type. I mean, they got to have some kind well, of thoughts on this whole thing. I mean, like, A Rod's been Edwards... around them all this time, like yeah. Now, because like now, like you said, A Rod's been like courtside at games. Like, so is he going to be like barred from the arena now? <laughs> like, you know, like what happens if A Rod decides <laughs> to like, like I'm going to still be going to these games because I'm under the assumption, like. Like I'm the owner of the team, so it's it's gonna it's gonna it's an interesting thing. I'm kind of excited it's for it to see how this plays out. Because I'm again, if yeah. you're it's like it's it's war now, it's business war. Like it's like they have to be like if you're A Rod, you can't just like be like, All right, well, I'm just gonna not go to the arena anymore because then it's like you're almost conceding that you're conceding, not the owner. Right. Yeah. It's not, yeah. But it's like who's gonna who's gonna make the final call and if he can come in or not. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, like those aren't your seats, Mr. Rodriguez. Like yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like, Some yeah. like ticket booth guy would be like, no. Yeah. Because he's just like, in. it's like, I don't want to push too hard because if you do end up being the owner, like you can be right. like, oh, you're the ticket guy that's always my fucking seat. I don't know which one of you guys is my boss here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Please, like, I just make $35,000 a year. Yeah. Like, I don't really yeah, want any exactly. of these problems. Right. Like, please, just like, please keep me out yeah. of it. Like, like no. somehow the only person that's going to lose in this is going to be some poor like ticket guy that like works for like the, the team. Yeah, he'll be the only one that loses out somehow. On no, this, but... I mean it's it's insane. Yeah, but, it's gonna um, be it's gonna be an interesting thing. It's, it should be. I fun think to it watch probably it it'll probably be more like fun and funny to watch as fans than it'll actually have like impact. I think on anything with the team or on the court. Yeah. Um, I mean, what you're saying would be funny, but realistically, like I don't think any player has ever made a basketball decision based on who owns the team, unless it was like Donald Sterling. Um, <laughs> but I mean, as long as the guy can cash the checks like edwards is going to be on the max rookie he's on the, already just got his max rookie extension hasn't even kicked in so i think he's locked in for at least like four more years and yeah. max money he'll eventually make an all-nba team if he's, he'll make one this year almost certainly so he'll be eligible to get even more the next time around so 
I don't think he's gonna. I mean, is he gonna leave money on the table because he doesn't like the owner as much as he's not as cool as A Rod? Like, I don't. It's not like Glenn Taylor is like a you know outed racist or anything like that. He's just like hasn't been a great sports owner. But he again, he like doesn't he's he write ro- the checks he roast cash. chickens alive or something? <laughs> wasn't he the one that? Uh, yeah, I mean, but I don't those think, animal. If I don't think Edwards that, has to go hang out with him. The animal rights <laughs> protesters. What are the lady shirts? Yeah. Yeah. Glenn she Taylor roasts the animals alive. Yeah, they glues right. up the ground and to the like the hoop or something like okay, that. Okay, but again, that's. Obvi- that's just because his money goes towards funding some company that doesn't like kill kill its meat as ethically as that <laughs> protester group wanted. Like I don't know. I'm sure if you want to look at every single owner, no, I, in the league, I mean, I just I, I only not. just know like you said he was just he yeah. had had some issues. What was he suspended for, real quick? Because we got to get to the uh, oh, get to God. that. Oh I don't. It wasn't. It was just something like stupid. He just broke some dumb rule. It wasn't right. something like right. morally like he was a All criminal. Right. Move it on. Then yeah, it's boring. Yeah. Then yeah. I thought I it was gonna be something fun. The internal tweeted it wasn't a racist tirade. It was just by his like hooker girlfriend like Donald. I think it was he was trying to do something that was just like against the rules but i like that. I something to do that. with like ticket sales or something dumb that just wasn't allowed and he should have known better but that's badass that's a funny stat um uh, but yeah like i said should be a very at least interesting and fun story to come out and if we do get those like texts that'll just be cherry on top. oh my god <laughs> i will set aside some time to read through however many pages of <laughs> yeah. uh, court documents are released oh, yeah. all right all right, so that's around the NBA. Uh, real mm-hmm. quick, you, we've talked a little bit about them in around the NBA, but we have the uh, Pelicans coming up on Saturday. Yes. Did I see a 5 o'clock game on Saturday? You did. I kind of – I don't hate that. I don't, I don't hate, hate it at, at all. all. Um, it's weird. I mean, that Saturday we got, you know, Elite Eight games, so I wouldn't mind if it was a little differently Do you think scheduled, that's but... – are those right smack dab in the middle of that? I thought that maybe they could well, do that to I think avoid the first, that. I think, I think the first one's at 6. Maybe it's at 7, so maybe it will be over. And that would Kind of like looking case, to avoid it. Fine. Yeah. Um, what's New Orleans? An hour behind us? Yeah, so that would be 4 maybe. o'clock New Orleans time. It's still a very weird start time. Weird uh, time, no matter what. For yeah. wherever they're playing. But... Oh, yeah, but I mean... City, um, that's weird. Assuming... Like, yeah, right. Regardless of time zone. Weird time. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I am definitely excited to watch this uh, game. Like I just mentioned, the Pelicans are one of one of the most fun league pass teams to watch. Uh, Zion, we've talked about how he's cut down on weight. He's playing. We've seen a ton of points Zion, especially lately with no Brandon Ingram. Um, super fun team to watch. They're loaded with depth. A bunch of like crafty wing guys who I love. Herb Jones, one of my favorite defensive players to watch in the entire NBA. He is unbelievable. Uh, that'll be. Really good test for Jason Tatum. That'll be an absolute battle. Uh, Jones is amazing. Defender, Trey Murphy, another really good wing player. He can finish above the rim. He can shoot the lights out. Najee Marshall, another tough defender they've got on the wing. Um, They obviously have C.J. McCollum, creates a lot of their offense along with Zion. They've got Jonas Valanciunas down low, who's another kind of big bruising center who might be able to give us some trouble on the offensive glass. But Pelicans don't really play him down the stretch. They like to go small, play a lot of Larry Nance. Um, It'll be interesting to see. Pelicans are in a dogfight right now with the Clippers for that 4-5 spot now. Who's going to host uh, in the first round? And I think the Suns are actually even creeping up only a game or two back in the Pelicans. So basically it goes for every team in the West, but these game, every game means a ton for the Pelicans. So I assume we'll get a really good effort out of them. Game will mean a lot to them. I hope that um, you know we have pretty much our whole team healthy and go out and treat this like an important game. Hopefully another good learning opportunity when what should be a playoff-like setting and atmosphere um so another really good opportunity for a team that you know no matter what we probably won't see again but is a good team that'll be playing hard uh and want it badly so should be a really fun game all right yeah so i'm excited to see it i'm excited to see this new slim sexy slender zion that i've been hearing so much about <laughs> um Jeez. right smack down the middle of supper time too so that should be interesting he's either going to be really mm-hmm. hungry and or he might try to like sneak it dinner in early or maybe it's maybe i shouldn't even make jokes about science way right now he's doing well i shouldn't do that um that's fair if he's doing well i'm gonna i'm gonna cut the jokes out um yeah. but yeah i'm excited <laughs> for the game i'll see you back here uh saturday uh right around supper time after the celtics play the uh pelicans there to put a mm-hmm. bow on this one uh celtics lose 123 122 in overtime they go oh and two on the trip to the hawks uh, series doesn't start to the home team loses though, so I'm not too worried about this Hawks series. <laughs> um, Juddy, we will see. I will see you on Saturday. Everybody, uh, have a good rest of your night and a good rest of your week. Take care. Peace out, Juddy Ed.